Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer for Breakfast, ABB. I am Danielle from Marty and Danielle in the morning on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime of me, Paul Segura, brewmaster of Carl Strauss Brewing. What's up? We are so insanely excited to welcome Garrett from Maui Brewing all the way in Hawaii. Welcome, Garrett. What's up? Aloha. Nice to see you guys. Aloha. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome, we welcome. Yeah, it's, it's two right now, I think. We, we get enough daylight, so we don't have to do the daylight savings things like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy. Our time stays the same. <laughs> Hawaii <Yeah>. time. <laughs> Hawaii time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> when I fly there, I kind of gain a little bit of time, you know? Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to take off at like the 7 a.m. flight out of San Diego when Alaska was doing that. And then you land here at like 10 a.m. and you're like, wow, I still have a whole day. <laughs> yeah. I've done that so route Garrett, a lot. Garrett, you're from San Diego, right? I am. Definitely. Uh, born and raised native San Diegan and uh, went to school Poway High, Twin Peaks Middle School. I played right. football at Poway. So, you know, definitely. Uh, I, I chewed the same sand as y'all out there for sure. That, you know, I mean, Listen I, to 91X on, on your way to go surf. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Back before 4S Ranch was even built, you know, we had like Artesian and Black Mountain Road that was the dirt side of the road. And we used to take one of those two to get to the beach really fast from Poway. And we'd be, you know, blaring the radio. You know, this is high school, so shirts off. You know, of course, we were seat belted in, surfboards in the back, and just frozen over to, to Del Mar and Long Beach. It was awesome. So it brings back some memories. <laughs> what was your favorite surf spot here? Uh, I think we, we did La Jolla Shores a lot, but I was lucky because, actually, if you went just a little bit north, like Torrey Pines, really, Torrey Pines. Uh, my grandpa worked at the Scripps Oceanographic Institute. So we used to get to park in his stall and then go out by the pier there. So that was really cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. legit. Yeah. Well, let's get right into our very first beer. This is the Maui Pineapple Chi Chi Nitro Golden Ale. I have not opened this yet because Garrett, you said that there is a very specific way to open up a nitro beer in a can. So take me through. Yeah. Well, so first thing with uh, nitro beers is they're not carbonated as much as like, obviously, you know, a traditional style of beer. So because nitrogen doesn't just pop out of the liquid like CO2 does, you want to do what's called rouse the nitrogen or, or rouse the beer. Uh, there's no solids in here, so you don't have to worry about like mixing it or anything. But the big thing is you keep it closed. You want to just kind of do like one, two, three, like kind of inversions. You're not, you're not trying to shake it up. You just want to rouse it and then uh, open it fully, and then you're going to pour it into your pint glass or glass just vertically, right? So you're going to want to, yeah, and then as it fills, just slowly come back, and then you'll see, right, it'll scare you for a second, but don't worry, and then see, watch, see how it's all like cascading, it's like this oh, yeah. hazy kind of milky, and it's going to settle out, just like you'd see with a Guinness, right, where that creaminess all settles, and you're left with that really tight, packed yeah, just like that. You're going to see it slowly cascade into its beautiful pale color. Um, right now, your room is probably loaded with pineapple and coconut aromas. So, you can cheers. smell the pineapple from a mile away, man. Yeah. Well, this one, too, for us is a huge departure. Anybody who's been drinking our beer for a long time, as, as we have, uh, you know, we've been around 16 years now, and we've been, we've always been innovators, but we've, this one's totally a departure from what we're traditionally doing, where we, instead of leading with beer as the primary flavor, we were like, let's let's give the fruit beer lovers what they want, more fruit, right? It seems to be, you know, the fruit bombs, if you will, people are talking about. So we just said, you know what, give the people their fruit. And so we said, more pineapple, more coconut, let's just geek out on this one. Um, I think really inspired after the cocktail, the Chi Chi, right? So a cocktail inspired beer and a Chi Chi is a pina colada that's made with vodka instead of rum. Uh, of course, no spirits used in any of this, but it was just meant to be that blended cocktail you can imagine sitting by the pool drinking, but in beer form for a beer lover. Dude, you did it. <laughs> right? Super freaking good, man. Isn't that crazy? And just under 5% alcohol too, so you can you can drink a couple of them. <laughs> oh my god this is like a trip straight to mount crushmore 
<laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna use that one at some point. <laughs> As a kid going to Disneyland, I used to look forward to going like to the tiki room to get the dole whips, right? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I've gone to Hawaii before in Oahu. They've got the dole plantation out there, and they have the dole whip. There. Um, and there's one spot at Disneyland that has the dole whip with rum in it, which is like yeah. I go there every single time. But this. Takes two of my favorite worlds, beer and pineapple, and meshes them together. And dude, yeah. the whole nitrogenation thing is just like bonus on top. You know, yeah. a nice mouthfeel, a creamy mouthfeel. That's exactly what we were going for. Is you know, we were sitting in the room. We're like, you know, we're known also one of our core brands that we do year round is called Pineapple Mana Wheat, and that one's available. Like I said, year round. It's made with the same Maui Gold pineapple juice, but but that beer I would describe that as an American wheat brewed with Maui Gold pineapple. Whereas this beer, it's like hard to describe it as a nitro golden ale brewed with pineapple. It's almost like pineapple with nitro golden, right? It's, it's the other the other way. But um, the pineapple mana I think was might have been the first pineapple beer produced. Certainly the first Maui Gold pineapple. Um, it's a specific fruit. That's why I, I don't just say pineapple because it's really unique compared to pineapple you get from around the world. But when we were sitting in the room to create this, we're like, well, how can we just do something totally different? There'd been a whole bunch of colada style beers that were brewed this past couple of years. And we're like, yeah, but let's do it our way. Let's try to do something really cool. And we want it to be creamy. We want it to be, you know, juicy. We want all of those things. And so nitro for creaminess. And then of course, lactose we added as well. Uh, so we used uh, lactose sugar, which of course ferments out to give uh, body and mouthfeel uh, a bit of creaminess, but without adding to the alcohol percentage. So it's really more about that body that it gives. And then you combine that with the nitro and you might as well have put that in a blender with ice. It's just super creamy. So. Garrett, I will tell you, um, I am not a fan of pineapples. I grew up in New Mexico and the pineapple was just not one of those things that we really had. This doesn't taste like any pineapple that I have ever had. Like this is just, like you said, it's creamy, it's light. It makes you want to continue to drink more of it. And yeah. I see on the can, it says that it's brewed with local pineapple and toasted coconut. Do you guys mm -hmm. locally at Maui Brewing? So we toast all the coconut locally for sure. Uh, that's something that we've been, uh, got since we invented brewing with coconut back in 2005, uh, it was a coconut porter that was the first beer brewed. Uh, we've toasted our coconut since then. I mean, we toast more than a ton of coconut a week here. So it's, it's a lot of coconut going through the brewery. But the, um, and what we do is we do buy the chips. So we're not cracking coconuts and draining the water. Like we can't. <laughs> Maybe maybe when we're doing 300 barrels a year, but not when we're nearly 60,000 barrels a year, different story. Um, but with the pineapple, it's a good point. You recognize like it's a different pineapple. That's the Maui gold or really the Hali'i Maili gold pineapple that's grown here on Maui. And the reason it's different is it's really high sweetness. So a lot of sugar content, very low fiber and extremely low acidity. So like if you've ever had other pineapple from around the world, there's almost a citric bite to it. That's that tartness. We don't have that. We have super sweet, juicy pineapple and, and, it, and it shows as you can tell in the beer. So that's why when we brew a pineapple beer, we're like, we don't use an extract. We're not going to import juice. We've got to use the Maui gold. That's the, the one. And anybody who's been here on vacation and eaten the Maui gold pineapple, you know what we're talking about. So what the the sweetness from the pineapple, do you have to add the pineapples in the primary fermentation or do you add them later in the process? So, you know, we've done we, we've done a lot of beer with a lot of different fruit. I mean, we've always joked that, you know, we're blessed with all this tropical fruit that everybody spends a fortune for. And oftentimes the fruit here is, you know, rotting in the field or falling off a tree. Right. Uh, not always, but sometimes. Uh, so we've tried it at every stage. And what we found is that when we were adding the pineapple juice to uh, an un, like to wort basically, then it would always ferment out differently because the pineapple is relatively dirty. It has a lot of its own uh, wild yeast. So when the pineapple juice actually comes down, because we press up at the winery, uh, when it comes down the mountain, it's about an hour drive and that pineapple juice is already starting to ferment. So what we've been able to do is we schedule it that as soon as it's pressed, it comes to the brewery and we recently bought a flash pasteurizer so we pasteurize the juice into finished fermented beer. 
And that's where we get that huge juiciness without having to worry about wild yeast or uh, any sort of, you know, re-fermentation. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So, Thanks for sharing yeah. that. I, I hope I didn't put you in a weird like position if that was proprietary or anything. No, I don't know how many times I've given the recipe for coconut porter out and it's very, it's, you know, we don't, we don't have to anymore because there's so many coconut beers out there, but you know, everybody does it their own way. It's, it's, here's how I say it. My mom gave me her recipe for chocolate chip cookies and a lot of people in San Diego in the beer business know my mom, Anita, and uh, anybody who's had her cookies knows they're the best. They don't taste anything like it, even though I follow her recipe to a T. So, you know, hey, more power. If we can if we can help inspire someone else to do some cool beer, then, hey, there's nothing new under the sun that way. That's like the San Diego spirit right there I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Coming from native San Diegan. Yeah. That's kind of the Aloha spirit too right there. It absolutely is, and, and it really, I think, should be. I think we could we could all use a little bit more Aloha in the world these days, uh, you, know, and, you know, especially, you know, sharing a beer and talking story, as we say here. Uh, I think we can definitely get, uh, we can solve a lot of the world's problems after my hot tea. <laughs> I, I wanted to have a beer, but I was like, I have so much more work to do today. <laughs> yeah, we did a good lace work. We did a good lace work yeah. on that glass, man. Yeah. Okay. So can we get this beer all over in the mainland here? You can. You can. Actually, you're more lucky than I am because I don't even have any here. I had to like go to our, we have a library where we keep, of course, our warm and our cold storage for us to do our, our QA, QC throughout the period that the beers are available and beyond. And so I have filmed a show uh, showing how to pour a nitro beer with pineapple chichi. And I had to go pull one out of the library. It's only like six cans per batch that we save. So I have one can of this left at home, but it's pretty much sold out in Hawaii and it just came out. And I think we did something like 4,000 cases. So I do know we have a bunch that landed in California. So uh, particularly the Western states are gonna see a lot more of it. But San Diego, our, our good friend, Chris Giffen, who dropped these off for you, made sure to get placements across all the, you know, the better beer stores. So uh, if they don't have it, ask for it by name. And, uh, our partners at Stone Distribution will make sure they get it. So, yes. Um, Eric, before we get into our next beer, this is your first time on Beer for Breakfast, and I really don't know your story. Can you kind of give us the layout of how you were in San Diego, went out to Maui, started Maui Brewing, and are doing the damn thing? Sure, sure. I, I was. I've not been on Beer for Breakfast, of course, but. Years ago, and I, I'd have to go back to you know the archives, if you will, to figure out when it was. But I did in studio with Steve Wagner, my good friend from Stone, uh, back in the day. This had to be, if I say five, six years ago, it was probably like eight to ten years ago. But, that was on uh, a different you know, radio station. Yeah. Was it? No, I don't yeah. think so. I think <laughs> no, it was. It was. <laughs> oh man. Okay, rewind, cut. No, you should have told me that when I talked about it before. <laughs> All good. Uh, see, to me, there is only one station in San Diego. That's why. It's just like, it must have been 91. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, I grew up in Poway. Um, my sister and I went to Poway High School. Actually, I have two siblings also that went to, younger siblings went there. Um, but in... Let's see, I graduated Poway in 96 and uh, already at that point had a, a love for beer. And I think that comes from uh, my stepdad and my, my grandpa, his, his dad, my step grandpa, I guess. Um, we just call him Opa. And we always had Coors Banquet and then Craft, or back then, of course, it was micro beer, right? So we had Carl Strauss, right? My mom used to bring Carl Strauss Amber Lager up to me in college you know, when, I, when I went to school up in Davis. Uh, it's because I couldn't buy my own beer because I was only like 18. Um, sorry, mom. mom. <laughs> I think statute of limitations is over. I'm 42 now. It doesn't matter. Um, but then my grandpa would get beer from all over the world through his connection at Scripps, you know, because he did purchasing. So boats would come in from all over the world and they knew Opa loved beer. So they'd bring in beer because then they got their equipment or purchasing stuff, whatever it was, faster, I, apparently. So I remember trying MGD and I hated it. That was my uncle's beer. But then I tried this beer from New Zealand called DB Drought. And it was an English style bitter that was changed my life. It was like, that's what, that's what I like. I like that. So of course started drinking Sierra, uh, of course, Carl Strauss. And then in 96 stone opened and being the year I graduated high school, 
my grandpa, of course, bought a keg of Stone IPA. And so I remember drinking that and uh, thinking, that, wow, this is good stuff. So fast forward, went to college. I was in finance, so I did investment consulting and banking. And the ripe old age of, I think, 23, I came on a trip to Hawaii on vacation. And I was like, that's where I want to be when I retire, right? Thinking 30, 40 years from now uh, or from then. And after a couple more trips, I was like, why can't I just go there? I was drinking what, quote, the local beer. And I learned from a bartender on Front Street that the, the longboard lager that I was ordering every time I came to town was actually made in Portland not in Hawaii. And being a San Diego native, I'm like, that sucks. Like beer is local. Like there's so much culture there and it's such a proud people and culture here in Hawaii. How could they not have their own beer? And it was just kind of like a light bulb went off and it was like, I need to do this. I need to give Hawaii its own beer. And that was a simple idea was to make quality, innovative, authentic, local Hawaiian craft beer. So as an idea, Maui Brewing was born in 2003, I'd say, uh, and we opened January of 05. Yeah. So what is the beer community like in Hawaii? Is like, is it a big craft beer community? I mean, honestly, so, so as the mainland ignorant person who's never been to Hawaii, I just assume you guys drink drinks out of pineapples and like, that's, that's <laughs> it. Pretty much, yeah, that's how we do it, you know. So I put on clothes just for you today because, you know, my learning cloth was in the wash. But I have a quick question for you. When was the last time you had a suit and tie on? Ooh, uh, let's see. I think I have that picture somewhere. Uh, it was actually in France. I represented uh, the Brewers Association at a beer dinner at the ambassador's residence. So I had to dress up for that. So. And uh, yes, the tw probably the 2017 SBA Awards. Uh, thank you, Marsha. Uh, where we were selected as the National Small Business Persons of the Year. Uh, so that was quite an honor. Yeah, cheers to that as well. <laughs> but yeah, we were on camera. But and where's the Kim chick, man? Where's Kim Lutz at? Kim is she's running around downstairs somewhere. She's you know creating a new masterpiece of beer somewhere. Um, you know, every every uh, brewers in San Diego definitely know Kim. Uh, yeah. She worked at uh, St. Archer for like four years uh, from startup till when they sold. But she was with us from 2008 to 2012. And then she we always say we she went to college in San Diego at St. Archer and, and other breweries uh, for about four years. And then it came back to us. So when she left, she was lead brewer and she ran essentially all R&D up at the brew pub. But then uh, she came back to us as brewmaster, and since uh, I think January 2017, she's run the run the show here when it comes to quality and innovation. Um, and I think we're all better for it. So yes, cheers. I see you're on the Hazy Big Swell. Yeah, I think I think it's time. Hazy Big yeah. Swell, Hazy IPA, 6.8 percent ABV. So is this just a hazy version of the Big Swell that we all know and love? Yes, yes and no. Uh, you know, we, we really wanted to make it truly hazy. So I think the bones of the beer are certainly based in Big Swell, but the, the, the aromatics and really the hops are, are quite different where, you know, we took some of the hops that are in there, but then we went for looking towards that hazy side, you know, even a yeast change as well to make sure we had a nice proper hazy. Um, I myself am not a huge fan of hazy IPAs, I hate to say, um, but actually I don't hate to say it. I'm proud to say it. <laughs> Um, but I will say that my team certainly changed my mind about it. And I think the first one they did that I was super stoked on was the Lava Love that we did with uh, Modern Times. So we had uh, a couple of the brewers from Modern Times were out here and they brewed with Kim and I was, I was away. And so I came back and I'm like, what's this? I'm like, I didn't even know we were doing something with Jacob guys and um, drank it. And I was like, this is really good. I actually like that. So. If I'm being honest, I've been crushing Hazy Big Swell. And then our next Hazy, we have a trial batch right now called Pono Life. That's with our friends out of Roadhouse Brewing in Wyoming. And it's a Lilacoy Hazy IPA, it's a passion fruit. And those have been the two beers that I'm crushing. So I am a convert, but it has to be a good Hazy. So. Cheers yeah. to that. Yes, <laughs> you. I'm kind of in the yeah, same it, with you. This one has a nice pillowy mouthfeel, man. Yeah. It's like got a nice rounded you get the hop flavor not much bitterness 
Yeah. This is really like, low bitterness. Yeah. I mean, it's where, where Big Swell is going to be in that, uh, you know, range, but let's say around 80 IBU, you know, this guy, I mean, I don't even know where it really measures in at because hazies aren't about IBUs, right? It, this is, it's about bringing in those grapefruit, tropical fruit character. I know obviously the Eldo, the, and it, it says right on the can, Citra, Chinook, Simcoe, and Mosaic uh, were the primary hops in this. And I think they came through really great. I mean, it, it's, at 6.8%, I think it drinks a couple points lower. Uh, yeah. So you do, of course, you know, be, be uh, you know, conscious of that um, before you end up unconscious. But, you know, we had, I think I had a few of these the other night uh, with the team and, you know, they're, it just keeps going down because it's got that freshness to it that's just that vibrant hop character with, with virtually no bitterness. Yeah. I also like that it doesn't leave that, like, mouth coat that sometimes yeah, hate that's, yeah. That, yeah, I don't even know what you'd call that, but the, you know, almost like an enameling. Uh, like on the, the like a... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Feeling that it's not a yeast bomb. I mean, it's got a lot of yeah. like, uh, it's got some protein in there, and it's maybe a little hop like polyphenols, and yeah, but it's really tropical, and it's got a nice like sweet orange flavor too. It's really it's yeah, quite, yeah. And you're right. It's it's super, super pleasant. Six, eight. It maybe drinks like maybe five and a half to six, you know, yeah. six max. Yeah. And that's what you can, it's, it certainly uh, takes, where it takes you on the road to Mount Crushmore. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 but it's a great beer. And I'm really proud of the team doing that. This is actually the first of our hazies uh, this year. Uh, obviously our limited calendar got thrown off last year due to, of course, you know, our, our <laughs> our nemesis COVID. Um, but so we revived our calendar this year and brought in four new hazies that are um, in our four pack series. So every quarter we do a limited release six pack and we do a limited release four pack. So the Chi Chi is our limited six pack right now. And then the limited four pack coming is hazy big swell. And then after that we have Pono Life and two tickets to paradise, uh, which was another really popular one we did. And throughout the year, just a few more. So, uh, it, we're really excited about this year's calendar, and I'm sure uh, our friends in San Diego are going to love it. Garrett, I am so impressed with what you guys are doing over there at Maui. And before we say goodbye, I also want to give a shout out to the other things you guys are doing other than just beer. So we've got the seltzers. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a nice, like, four different kind of variety seltzer pack. Um, I personally really love the citrus. And nice. then also, these really fun cocktails in a can that you guys have now as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, you know, a long time ago, we started talking about, uh, you know, the idea behind Maui Brewing Company as a brewery. We've been blessed with some great success due to, you know, support from my my uh, countrymen in San Diego, if you will, and all really around Hawaii. But you know, we started thinking about, well, there's beverages that people drink that aren't beer. There's actually people who drink something other than beer these days. So we said, let's see about what we can make to give them that local experience when they come to Hawaii. So if you're a seltzer lover, if you're a cocktail lover, if you're a gin or whiskey lover and you're coming to visit, maybe you'll want to try a local version of what you're used to drinking back home because it's you know something different. So we, we set out with the idea of creating the brand Ohana, which is Maui Brewing, Maui Heart Seltzer, Kupu Spirits, and really developing a craft beverage company. So we're making different beverages in the same ethos, the same principled foundations that Maui Brewing Company started off with. So sustainability is a big one, right? It's one of our bedrock. Innovation, authenticity, sense of place, and of course, quality. So that kind of funnels through to all the beverages. Um, you know, seltzer in its first year, 2020, uh, we brewed about 12,000 barrels of seltzer. It took us five years to reach that in beer. So uh, it, it has certainly been a success for us. Uh, and then on the Kupu Spirits side, Kupu Spirits is our distillery. And the idea of a Kupu, uh, Kupu is like an offshoot, right? It's a new beginning, a, a new growth. And that's symbolized on the can by that, that swirl logo is like a, what they call here, pohole, or if you're from the Northeast, it would be the fiddlehead, like with the fern that unfolds, right? So that Kupu is a new growth from an existing base or foundation. A foundation, of course, is Maui Brewing Company. So we wanted to create a spirits company that was separate from the brewery because breweries don't make spirits, distilleries do. And so that's where we have this whole kind of thought process around how the brands have touch points to each other, but they are very much their own 
being, if you will. So getting ready to release our first aged whiskey here soon too. Uh, so we're super excited about that. Uh, but we take our, our natural island sodas that we make in-house and we blend them with our spirits to then make the canned cocktails as well. Garrett, I'm telling you, you have made San Diego so damn proud. Like oh, you were you. slaying it out there in Maui. I will speak for Paul right now. I can't wait till we can get back out to the island and hang out and drink some beers with you and just yeah. enjoy uh, life. <laughs> did I hear live broadcast from the tasting room? <laughs> I mean, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> and now my wife and I already have tickets in June to go to Maui. Oh, you might have to tag along. And I'm yeah. down. I think you can eat the kupu, right? The little as they spin off. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They call yeah. So we do uh, pohole is what it's usually referred to as a is the, the type of fern and pohole fern salad or pohole salad. So they're it's just like in the Northeast where they do fiddleheads, very similar. Uh, super tasty. So we were actually just talking about that the other night with one of my chef buddies who, so the first time I ever had pohole was from him. This is like 12 years ago at an onion festival. So kind of crazy to be thinking about that again. Well, yeah. Garrett, fingers crossed that we can travel to Hawaii safely and we can all do this thing and we can enjoy yeah. beers with you. Thank you so much for joining us for Beer for Breakfast, ABV. Yeah. Uh, this Friday morning, Paul will be with myself and Marty for Beer for Breakfast at 9, 10 Pacific Standard Time. We will be drinking two different beers from Maui yeah. that we did not cover on Beer for Breakfast, ABV. So make sure you are with us for that. And uh, before we leave, Garrett, what is the best way for everybody to keep up with what's going on with Maui Brewing? Uh, so obviously best way these days, of course, social media. So you can find us at Maui Brewing Co. for our, of course, the brewery. We're at Maui Hard Seltzer on the seltzer side and at Kupu Spirits, K-U-P-U -U Spirits for the distillery. Uh, but of course, they all have their touch points back so you can find us. We do have four restaurants statewide, so two on Oahu and two on Maui. So come visit us for not only a beverage, but a, a bite of some great food. Uh, and Hawaii is open. We are safe. I'd say our counts are some of the lowest anywhere. You do need a negative test from a qualified or trusted partner, as they say, but you can absolutely come here. Uh, I use Vault Health myself because you can order the kit to your house and then you send it out. You don't have to even worry about scheduling an appointment. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to see you. Hawaii needs you, uh, not just us, but a lot of small businesses out here that would really love to see you guys back here uh, crushing a beer, or some poke, or you know, buying a t-shirt. Every little bit helps every business out here. We will see you this summer. Paul, any last words? Just a quick follow-up on that right there, because I thought there was still a 14-day quarantine like after you get, but if you test negative before you get on the plane, you don't yeah. have to quarantine thing. So 72 hours prior to your the last leg of departure, so out of San Diego, it's a direct flight to Maui. Kauai is different, and I very much encourage you to check the rules in each island before you decide to go. Uh, but 72 hours prior to your departure, you have to have a negative test taken within that window. And that's why I like Vault, because they really they make sure that you get that result, um, whether, whatever your result is. And you can come in and no, no quarantine. Uh, I think it's responsible to maybe do a second test a few days in, which are usually free here on Maui. Uh, and that way, when you get here, you know, hang out, get accustomed to the pool and, and don't go doing too much stuff. Take a second test three days in. And then you know, if you're negative, you know, by all means, enjoy the entire island. That's not required, but I think it's just acting in the best, uh, uh, most responsible way. Paul, we're going to Hawaii this summer. Let's go. I'd love to see you and guys. With that said, cheers to independently owned craft beer and radio. Bye.